Yes, yeah, so like I said, we are in a Cebu to discover. So there is this brother here who has a business. So we're going to have a, uh, a discussion of what are some of the things that is uh, moving, you know, when it comes to uh, a Cebu business wise. What are some of the ideas that we can put in your head that if you want to come and live here, maybe you would want to set up such a business. So let's get inside and then show you more. <laughs> nice. Hey, what's good, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. This is Echo Simpson. I am currently in Asebu, discovering Asebu. I've already had this um, vision, this idea of discovering Central Region. Ghana is divided into 16 regions, and we happen to hail from the Central Region, Cape Coast being the regional capital. There are a lot of communities, districts, municipalities here in the Central Region. But this time, we are looking at Asebu. I was here on Friday, Saturday, today is Sunday, and I happened to talk to a brother of mine who is doing massively well when it comes to the economic aspects of Asebu. I wasn't really coming to Asebu. I would pass from Asebu to Abrodunko, where my district education office is, or the headquarters, if I should say that. And I would pass by Asebu, but until you started coming to Asebu, until we started talking about Asebu Pan-African Village, now, I spent like three days or three times within a week here in Asebu. So I'm getting to know a little bit of Asebu and in the history, economically, entertainment, business and everything. I have been told by my brother here that before now, Asebu was very hot, but it's now hotter due to the fact that there's a lot of construction, you know, building and everything going on here. So I, I caught up with him since he has a business here to talk about the business part or the economic section or aspect of Asebu Pan-African Village and Asebu itself. So, Robert, Hello. thank you very much for being on my channel. You're welcome. Yes, tell us your name and what exactly you do, aside him being a head teacher like myself. <laughs> so, I'm into petty businesses and that is it. And I've been in Asebu since 2015. Okay. And it's a teaching profession that brought me around. So, that's the little I got to say for that. Okay, okay. So, it means that all of us, there's, there's an adage in a um, you know, local language that here in Ayaya, we are not from here, but due to travel, we now settled here. So, he's been here since 2016 or 2015. 15. Now, I started following Asebu like three years, four years ago. You've been here for like 50, uh, belly, how many years? Belly, 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 more than five years. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is the economic aspect? What are the list of things that people who are in Asebu are engaged in? Economic, something that gives them money to survive. All right. So um, on that aspect, let me clarify this. Asebu is a state. And okay. the community we are in now is Asebu Amantando hey. as an aspect of the state. Okay. All right. So when you come to Asebu Amantando, where we are now, mm -hmm. uh -huh, the economic activities is that uh, it has several villages. Okay. And it even has some villages that are not part of the state. Mm -hmm. So all the way through Putubu and others. Okay. So what happens is that, uh, you know, mostly there are farmers mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and they will need trucks to cut their produce. To, mm -hmm. to the to, mainland. Like to the mainland, barely even in Accra and others. Mm -hmm. So here we have a lot of tear tracks around. Kia. Kia tracks. Those okay. tracks. Kia, Rhino, Mighty, and all others. Okay. We have them around. So if you need, burden all the way from even Cape Coast through to Mankesim, if you need a Kia specialist, mm -hmm. this is where you get one. Okay. So for Kia and its specialist, you have one here. Okay. And the last time I checked, even all the way from Fusu. Somebody needed a care to just cut something. Mm -hmm. He called me to check if I can get one from here for him. Okay. So you should know the gravity of it. Okay. And in terms of so let, let people know what care is. Uh, these, is are, the these, are, these are trucks yeah, yeah, okay. that are used in carrying goods. goods. Okay. And in our part, they are farm produce mainly. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. And the neighboring villages too, they are also much, much, much into this charcoal production and others. Mm -hmm. So you can mention places like Abu Enu, where I teach or mm -hmm. where I work, you can mention places like Putubu and okay. others they are into charcoal production, uh, production seriously. Wow. And with that one too you should know what comes out of it. Yeah. Also with the villages nearby, if we mention Putubu like this, 
Uh, if you need ethanol, that is alcohol, mm -hmm. the sugar cane type. <laughs> yes. Okay, the sugar cane. Uh -huh. But my that. people know that we call them appetite. So mention the appetite. Right. Yeah. Appetite. The one that is made out of sugar cane. Or okay. that share at the end. Okay. That one to the home base is okay. put to be when you come to our enclave. So that is it. On the other aspect, uh, for petty businesses, we have a lot, but we need more. Okay. Right now, as we speak, the place is opening up. Mm -hmm. As the diasporans are coming in, and okay. also, uh, I'm hearing that Cape Coast is choked. Yeah, so, so a lot of people are living in here. Uh -huh. So if you need a place to build and address, in fact, I say it's very cozy, calm in terms of security and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm yet to encounter uh, a land litigation. I've yeah. never heard of one. So it's peaceful to get something here. Mm -hmm. And for now, we have people all the way from Cape Coast who are working there but are residing but, yeah. here and commuting day in and out. On other aspect to our eatery and others, we currently had one that experienced giving us an above standard one or the standard one. Okay. But we have our average type and we have only one. Yeah. And in terms of outing and then places to go on Sunday it's afternoon. It's limited. It's limited, <laughs> man. So... Sunday afternoon is something you need to step out or something like yeah. that. So on that aspect too, yeah. some should also come in. But I've seen this type of stores okay. where you you sell. What what do you call these days? This auto parts. Auto parts. Or yeah. basically locally we call it spare parts. Spare parts. Uh -huh. Okay, spare yeah. parts shop. So I've seen a lot of it. Which you own one? Yeah. I've seen one over there. Now let me ask a question. Would it be that because you realize there are a lot of um, vehicular transportation businesses here that made you open this because i don't think a table has more than more than 50 cars okay they may have, have more than, than 50 cars. Have more than that. that means that there's good uh project when it comes to you know selling sure. these things sure so it be because we have the care people coming uh, around and it's on the main no, road no 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 basically so in fact, where we are situated, just mm -hmm. as you mentioned the main road, mm -hmm. whatever you deal in, even if you don't have your regular customers, okay. those passing by, by, do patronize them. Okay. But then something I know a bit about it. Okay. So previously, I was running a coastal here. Okay. I wouldn't say the coastal wasn't moving. Mm -hmm. It was moving and I was making the sales and everything. Yes. But due to the hikes in the prices of the produce or the product, mm -hmm. I declined running that. So I've stopped the cost of switching to what I like doing. That mm. is the spare part. Okay. So currently, I would say there are two or three main spare part shops in town. Myself and then the age-old one and then a brother at the extreme end. Okay. And in fact, locally, we have this addict. We won't come go for in Juba. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't kill somebody's business before I start mine. Yeah. So I yeah, also to need start, to start yeah. mine and then, you know, just look at my customer relations and others for everything to move on. Well, um, listening to what you're saying, Moy also started a cool store. If you know more, the, the the auntie who has the Jamaican shop, yeah, she also started the coast and she made the same complaint that the prices were going so much high. And when people come and you give them the price, they, they'll be like, they don't want to. So she has to switch just like you. I think that is one good thing uh, people must learn to do. If this business is not really working well, you just have to switch and try another thing. You have seen the influx of African Americans or African diaspora coming to settle in as a as a businessman with your spare parts shop. Do you think Asebu is ready to accommodate and accommodate the number of African diasporas coming in? The hood is ready. <laughs> okay. But all I can talk about is the integration process. Right. How we integrate them. Yeah. So they are from a different world or mm -hmm. different parts. Mm -hmm. We are in a different part. Mm -hmm. How do we assimilate both cultures together right. to make some harnessing happen? Right. That is what I'm, I'm, I'm looking up to. So that we have a proper design. The reason being that, you know, we have a whole lot of things. We have the schools. The schools we have our sports festivals, our cultural festivals, and others. Mm -hmm. These are all things when we bring them on board, okay. they will get to know the things we can offer, okay. the, the skills and talents the children have. Mm -hmm. You know, from where they are coming from, some are much interested in artwork. Yeah. We have people who are good in art. Mm -hmm. How do we nurture these children based on the experiences mm -hmm. that they have? have. Okay. So we need to have a talk about it mm -hmm. and see how we, 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 we bring them on board to make sure that their dreams and our dreams are realized on that aspect too. Right. right. So, so for we accommodating them in fact. Ever yeah, ready. But in yeah. the integration. The integration. Yes, I've I've realized 
speaking to both parties, I've realized, um, just like what you said, if I was a teacher here and I knew about all these things, just like you know, I think we should start a project where any African diaspora who comes would have a space in any of the schools in Asebu. Sure. Because this is Asebu giving out free land to the diaspora. So when you come, whether being an accountant, being a police, being whoever job, whatever thing that you know, I think that we should draw a plan that if you are staying in Asebu, you have the opportunity to enter any school, maybe with a card and say, hey, that I'm coming to teach basic one about this. And even and it's, 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 it's much of mentorship. Yeah. We know that the children we have here have I mean, not. The child will be in the village and as the last point he or she has been is as able. Mm. So in terms of uh, the openness the child has is limited. Yeah. So just as you mentioned, we have the engineers, we have uh, 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 the police officers and all others coming. They can visit our schools mm -hmm. and then mentor the children. Right. I okay, this is why I started from you've been doing it. Yeah. Yeah, this is why I we started have been from. doing it. Wait, before you <laughs> start. When we started teaching in the rural communities, I, I, I came out in 2008. When did you come out? 2011. 2011, okay. And then we met, and then we set up a team called Ekis Possibility. Sure. So what we were doing was organizing, spelling bee, reading, speaking, and English literacy in almost all the communities. And then we organized the mega one yeah. with a whole, with about uh, 70 90. schools. It's barely 90. Barely 90 yeah. schools. Like, and it was fun, you know, we, we had a winner and then we've been working together. So uh, there are a lot of things that whilst you are here as an African diaspora with all the skills that you have, you can come in and then we work together. Now talk sure. of um, the Asebo Pan-African village. Sure. You may have heard of it. I've been there, but it's been long. I came back to see the place again. Okay. Yeah. So your chief. Yeah. It's given out 5,000 acres of free land yeah. to the diaspora. Yeah. What is your, for them to settle, do whatever they want? What is your take on that, your honest take on that? It's positive. It's positive. It's positive. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, I'm saying it's positive because our elders have this update. I'll say it in fancy. What they're hoping about the teacher, cool. Right. So it's barely. Yeah, how do I put it? How do I put it? Oh, uh, uh, it is the visitors that develop the our communities. So yeah. there are people from Asebu who are indigenous but are residing elsewhere. They are developing. Yeah, they, okay, so develop, the same okay. way people from elsewhere should also come, join in and develop here. Okay. And these are our brothers who are coming in. Mm -hmm. So in fact, they are much welcome. Great, yeah. great. Now, it's a brilliant idea. And it's a brilliant idea. Shout out the, to the, the chief of the, the himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right, great. Yeah. So if you're watching this video and you have any comments, anything that you want to talk about, just put it up as a comment. We will come back and do it. Now tell me a little bit about your store. Okay. How much did you start with? What is in there? And how is business going? Okay, so I started barely a month and a half ago. Oh, okay. After down the, the the cold store. Okay. Yeah. So I did a lot of studies around with the mechanics and all others. Mm -hmm. So clearly, I started. I had a shop already. Okay. Okay. I had the store already. The that store, was the okay. structure already. So I didn't, didn't waste much money on that. And uh, so I barely pushed in to twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand as the, as the, as the start. Okay. So they are the staffs I have in, and for now I have the basic staffs in mm -hmm. terms of auto staffs. Mm -hmm. The universal ones. We have the Epozy. We have the plugs, the starter plugs. Okay. I have this sprays, uh, the brake fluids, and others. Yeah. But let me talk about the name of my brand first. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Wolvik. <laughs> well, that is Wolvik, William and Victoria. So I Wolvik. named my brand after my parents, and that is it, William and then Victoria. Okay. So uh, that is it. So And some oils, some coolants, uh, battery terminals, and all others. So the filters... Some some plug wires, accelerator mm. cables, uh, gaskets, and all of this, and the belts. Yeah. yeah, I think we have plenty of them. But as and when they, they are requested, that is where I bring it mm -hmm. because I don't want to stock where it will lock up my fans and then yeah. the next thing I do, I am able to fetch it in. So I I, I I admire people who are able to set up businesses. I don't know, I've not been able to do it. Like 
it's, it's have a stock. Stock. Maybe, maybe mine is to be doing this. Sure, sure. Yes. So, sure. and somebody will also say, I can't stand in the in the in the camera and be talking and be doing this. So, everybody and what they're going to do. Yes, you know. Yes, I've I've been here for three days, and I honestly I love here. Yeah. I love the people. They are welcoming. Because I've never slept. Okay. On the land of um, Asebu okay. until today. Okay. And I've seen the good people of Asebu. We, we, I mean, we've had some friends. Yeah. Very okay. yeah. Very okay. So, hey, thank you very much. This yeah. was a quick one to tell you exactly what is happening in here. So, if you have a, a one message for the African diaspora, the people of Asebu, the travelers plying your route to wherever, this is the time for you to tell them. So, look into All the right, family. So, hello, family. In fact, Asebu is a nice place to be. And I've been here since 2015, that is September. So feel free anytime you want to come in. Um, one thing, it's a cultural place. And it's, it's, it's time immemorial when we are to date. So in terms of history, just feel free, enter the palace. Mm -hmm. And you love when they, love, they take you around. Because if you hear of Asebu Amenfi and the history surrounding him, the rocks which he sat on and all others. In fact, it's something that should be looked into. Yeah. If you believe that way back where we were, Bando Kwaman, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I believe there is a rock there that was used by Asebu Amenfi as an Afritua. Okay. I've seen it myself. An overlord there told me we had a walk from Jabankum mm -hmm. to uh, uh, Kwaman. Kwaman. So I think uh, if they, they, they connect everything, it's mm -hmm. just a full stream tour. Right. So that the tour won't just end here. Uh -huh. On the other aspects to with the diasporans that are coming, they should know that we are in for them and they are in for us. Mm -hmm. There will be certain odds right. because of the cultural differences. But we are ready to make sure everything works. And they can attest to the fact that things are working. So yeah. they should just uh, open up. We are also opening up and that is it. For now, in, in, in terms of our eatery and others, we need more. Mm -hmm. Right now, if I need pork, fried one and all others, you wouldn't get Yeah, it. and Sunday afternoon is just one place. You just have to go to Cape Coast and all others. So room for improvement and then development and then in terms of uh, investment investment right. yeah because the lands are there mm -hmm. and if you want to get into the agro businesses the lands are also they just mm -hmm. see the overlords and just as i said for litigations yeah stay them out we just have not encountered one mm -hmm. everything will be good to go all right so thank you very much guys for checking out my channel we're still in a stable pushing more for you peace